Ladies and gentlemen, it's currently December 14th, 2022, and Magnus Carlsen is currently the best chess player in the world. Magnus Carlsen has been the world champion in every type of format. Slow, rapid, and blitz. He's accomplished everything that there is to accomplish in the world of chess, but what he did yesterday, and what I will be featuring in this video, will just absolutely blow your mind. That's all I'm gonna say. Give me about 30 minutes of your time, and you will be absolutely shocked at what I am about to show you. And before I show you all these games, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, Madrinas. Folks, I've been working with Madrinas for a few months now, and they are the only sponsor to have really taken great care of me. They didn't just make me my own shaker with Gotham Chess on it, they also made me an entire new flavor. And they wanted me to tell you that for today, and today only, December 14th, all of their orders are going to be free shipping in the US domestically. On top of that, at any point you want, you can use my code Gotham and get an additional 20 20% off. And beyond my flavor, they have a massive selection of however you want to take your caffeine. They've got their low sugar green coffee fuelers, for example. They also have whole bean flavors. In fact, they recently added two new ones. You can do a basic pour over, you can use a French press, maybe you want to drink an espresso shot in the morning. However you want to take your coffee, Madrina's Coffee has got you covered. And what they've done for all of you is bundled my shaker with my flavor. If you want to support me, you want to try out some super tasty coffee, that's the one you can get. But regardless of what you're interested in, you got to go to madrinascoffee.com today on December 14th to get free shipping anywhere in the United States. And use code GOTHAM. Whether you use it today, tomorrow, next week, that'll get you 20% off your order. Shout out to Madrinas once again. Now let's get back to the video. So Magnus Carlsen was playing against Fabiano Caruana in the Speed Chess Championship quarterfinals. Now, if you don't know who Fabiano Caruana is, you need to watch more chess videos on YouTube. He is currently the United States chess champion. He has the third highest chess rating in the history of the game, and he played against Magnus Carlsen in a world championship match some years ago. He's a really good player. He's also a really nice dude. I just recorded a podcast episode with him on the C Squared podcast. You guys should go check it out. I might even link it in the description. It's a great podcast. I just saw him in Los Angeles, and I feel really bad making this video, okay? That's all I can say, all right? Like, I, what Magnus did to Fabiano in this rematch it's just mind-blowing. I mean, it's, I, I don't know. I, I, it's a combination of multiple factors that occurred. But anyway, let's kick it off. This is the first game. This is the five plus one segment. So five minute blitz, one second bonus. Chess begins. Magnus plays the move D4. All right? It's crazy. Play the move D4. Wow. No, I'm just kidding. That The exciting stuff doesn't happen just yet. Uh, now, we have a Nimso Indian. So Magnus invites kind of the sharpest variation uh generally here a lot of players with white will play knight f3 to avoid the pin on their knight but magnus says no i'm completely happy entering this variation plays the move queen c2 this is one of the main lines uh black plays castles and now white plays a3 trying to justify uh putting the queen on c2 because now you don't need to damage your pawn structure and you have the following position uh, at a low depth, the computer evaluates this position as slightly better for black, but the computer is on some sort of chess drugs. I do not know what the computer is talking about. Uh, Fabi plays d5, so just don't look at the computer for now. Uh, then Fabi plays this move, knight e4. Knight e4 is actually a genius move for bullet, because when you take something, you expect your opponent to recapture, right? And so maybe you pre-move knight f3, although that would be dumb because they could take like this. And then, you know, imagine you pre-move knight f3 and then you lose your queen. But that doesn't happen. Magnus attacks the pawn on c7. Fabiano develops the knight. Magnus defends the center. We have rook e8 and now knight f3. And now here Fabiano plays something very interesting. So Fabi at this point is like, well, I've got the rook lined up here on the king and I've got a little bit more development. So being that I am ahead, in, uh, I'm ahead of my opponent in development, I can strike at his position with a move like g5. Very counterintuitive move. Why would I push pawns in front of my king? My king is going to be weak. Well, white's position is actually a bit dicey here. I mean, h4 is threatening to trap the bishop, right? So bishop d3, h4 anyway, bishop e5, and you would think, well, you're trapped. Normally, yes, but Magnus's recent move would remove some defense of the position and actually, uh, you can now no longer take the bishop because, again, we just talked about this. Well, the, the queen gets in. And this is at least a draw for white. And, I mean, black could probably lose this position by allowing something like knight takes g5 and not, not queen there, knight there, or queen h7. Or The top engine move here is to go d5 first because computer is a scumbag. 
But that doesn't happen. Fabiano plays bishop f5, so he's still kind of within his preparation. We have knight takes e5, d e5, queen e7, and a couple moves later, Magnus castles. So a very tense position, right? It's zeros according to the computer, but that doesn't mean the position is equal. That just means that, you know, uh, computer just wants a smoke break or something. Computer should stop, probably. Well, computer vapes. <laughs> stop. I could see stockfish vaping. <laughs> this is a stupid little activity that's like popular, but still equally as damaging or something. I don't know. Bishop g6. Rook c1, c6. Now, Fabiano creates a nice and solid structure here. This makes plenty of sense. I mean, everything... I would actually probably prefer to play black in this position. I really like maybe the prospect of getting rid of this and attacking on the king side. Uh, Magnus plays rook e1, which just looks like stupid. Like, it just... This looks like a stupid move. Why would you put your rook in front of two e pawns? Not even one. Like, you don't put a rook in front of one of your own pawns. Like, you put the rook where you anticipate the board to open up. Why did Magnus do that? Now, look at this move. Knight to h2. The idea being that you want to go here and here, and you also want to play f3. And rook e1 is just for the stability of your position. And, like, you want to maybe play e4 in the future, so Magnus anticipates the center's going to open up. f3. Now the knight comes here, now Magnus takes on g6. No way. King, queen g7, right? Remember a long time ago? Like a very long time ago. You obviously don't remember this. Fabi played b6. The idea of b6 was to probably go c5 in the future. Maybe prevent a few other things from happening over here. That move destabilized that pawn. Magnus finds a maneuver here, which actually hits that pawn. Uh-oh. Check. Here. Now, Fabi is still in the game. He's down two pawns, but he's in this game. Why is he in this game? Because he has a very active knight, and white is very passive. So Fabi, still very aggressive with the counterplay. Look at this. I mean, Fabi's got the laser beams on the position. Magnus blocks the center. Fabi's ready to bring his other rook. Magnus marches forward. Fabi goes backwards. Magnus marches forward. Fabi marches forward. Magnus marches forward. Fabi marches forward. Who's going to win this game? This is insane. E6 check. King E7. Rook G7. Oh my goodness. The king runs to the center. Magnus stops the pawn. Fabi plays rook C1. He's winning. He's got to be winning, right? He can't take the pawn. Rook is pinned to the king. Oh my goodness. Knight E3 is coming back. And now, in this position, Fabi had to play take, take, and snag this pawn. And lose this pawn and, and win this pawn. And this is a very tense position, but I think black is probably still playing for a win here. It may, it's very close. Depends if the king can get here. And uh, instead of that, Fabi sort of plays kind of a natural move, which is king e5, stopping f6, and the rook is active. But this is a step in the wrong direction, and Magnus immediately punishes him. Immediate punishment. Now, all the rooks are facing each other with pawn anchors. Fabi plays rook c8. It's not the first mistake in chess that kills you. It's the second one. In this position, Fabi had to take first, apparently, and then play rook c8, or like move his rook, because after this move, I can take the pawn. See, Fabi had, I mean, it was time trouble. He has seven seconds. He would like, you can't take this, but the other rook can, and that's it. That's the end of the game. King e4, king f2. And the difference now is that after the big trade, I just go here. And the pawn anchor blocks the rook, and I'm going to queen. So, Magnus wins game one. It's one nothing. I mean, what? So what? one nothing. <laughs> who cares about one nothing, right? Yeah, who cares about one nothing? Okay, we're jumping ahead now to the three-minute segment. And I know you're probably like, Levy, keep, tell us the score. Yeah, hush. Just watch. E4, now we have E5. So we don't have an IMSO anymore. This is three minute blitz. This is not five minute blitz, it's three minute blitz. It's the way the speed chess championship works. Now we have knight F3, knight C6, we have a Spanish. And we get what's called the Archangelsk variation with B5, bishop C5, or like the Neo Archangelsk. Doesn't matter, you can, you know, use the opening name to win your local trivia night. Uh, anyway, here we go. So we have uh, A4, trying to target that pawn. Rook B8, trying to unpin. Take, take, d3, d6. We have a trade of bishops. And Fabi has very nice control here of the d4 square. Very nice control. I'm going to move this little notebook over here. Knight d2. Queen d6. H pawns. Bring the rooks. Again, Magnus just moves his rook in like a very stupid looking way. But he's the world champion. So like if Magnus moves the rook, we have to sit there for an hour like, hmm. It's like, you know, if I, if I blind tested two paintings at a museum, right? One was made by like a, a five-year-old and one was made by one of the best artists of the 18th century. And I didn't tell you which was which, but I told you one, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's one of these things. It's like when you go to a museum, you go, 
It looks like my seven-year-old cousin could have made that. No, it was made by, you know, and, and it expresses all sorts of emotions and complicated elements of history. It's like when Magnus plays the move Rook E1, it's like, mm. but when you play the move Rook E1, I'm like, what are you doing, stupid? Like, why are you blocking your own Rook? Anyway, Fabi gets aggressive here with Knight H5 and Knight F4. Another very strong position. Magnus plays Knight F7. Hangs a queen. Wait, are we seeing that correctly? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, but... He attacks a queen, but this is check. Yup. Yup. That's check, folks. Magnus sacrifices a queen for a knight. Now he's got a queen hit and a rook hit. So obviously the queen's gonna move. So he's gonna take the rook. It's check. Fabi moves his king. And now Magnus says, all right, I'm just gonna sack a queen for no reason. He literally sacrificed the queen. It wasn't really for no reason. Fabiano did put him under some good pressure there, but now Fabi has to win this position. But you know what Magnus loves more than anything in the world? Humans, activities. Magnus loves a rook and a knight together. Remember game six world chess championship against Jan Nipomnishi? It's one of my best videos. Hypest recap I ever made. If you never saw it, go watch it. Some of you have watched it five times, be honest. He loves rook and knight combos. And what does Magnus do throughout this game? Just plays moves. Now, Fabi had to be a little bit more accurate somewhere in this game. Like, apparently going to h3 was fine, but then he came back. Magnus got a good solid pawn structure. Trades off the rooks, which normally trading off rooks is going to benefit the queen. Because now, oh, white's only got one rook. And even though it's slightly better for black, it's not easy. All right, Fabi plays very natural moves, improving his position. Magnus gets us over here. Rook and knight versus queen. There's no way. There is not a... There's no way. No way. That black can win this game. Uh, that white can win this game. There's just no way. I mean, how, how's black gonna win? The worst case scenario, black gets perpetual. There's no way white can win this game. Knight e3 takes rook d. Oh my god, he's not even taking the pawn back. What? He's gonna lose all his pawns. Wait, but now he takes there. Now he puts the. Okay, Fabi might have to go for a perpetual because the thing is, the queen is very good, but it's good at hunting pawns. But all the pawns are defended. It's good at hunting the king, but the king is safe. And the pawns walk into nothing. The only thing Fabi could do is use the G-pawn as a distraction to break up the white structure. Now, he goes all in here with his king, but he's only got one pawn left. And, but there, again, there's no way. Oh, oh, rook f4 is tricky. Can't take it. There's a fork. Okay, rook g4. Check. Check. Okay. Oh, God. All right. Boys, just agree to a draw. Let's just call it a day. Check. Yep. Couple checks. Why is the... Uh-oh. Wait, wait, a, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, no. Oh, no. Magnus just chucked the pawn on F3 and ran forward. Now, at some point in this endgame, you're going to see the computer showing a draw. It is inhuman. Inhumane, unhuman, whatever you want to call it. It's not humanly possible here to find a draw with black when you have eight seconds on the clock. So Magnus took advantage of this absurd peace imbalance to bleed the clock down and just slowly walk his pieces up the board and win the game. Check. Create a little barrier here against the white king. No checks now. There's no checks. King back. Give a check maybe. Hit the queen. Rook comes back to block and here, I mean, this is, this is just literally nuts. It's the same exact thing that he did against Jan Nipomnishi. Same exact thing. Jan had a queen the whole game. Magnus ended up with a rook and a knight on a pawn, and he ended up winning the game. And in this game, he wins it because there's no more checks. Every single check is covered by the... That is just... It's, it's just insane. I, I mean, I, 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 I don't know what to say. Two games. Here's the third game. This is one of the last games of 3 plus 1, okay? One of the last games uh, of 3 plus 1. And um, after this, I'm going to give you a score update. So Magnus plays e4, this time Fabi goes for a Sicilian defense. Very high level match. Honestly, both guys are playing super well. One of them just happens to be Magnus effing Carlsen. And the effing stands for fudging. It's a cool new nickname that he has. So c3, knight f6. Now it's kind of like an Alapin. This becomes an Alapin Sicilian sort of. Not sort of, kind of like exactly. And um, Magnus goes for this kind of isolated pawn position. By the way, this time his rook move makes sense because it's on an open file. Knight c3, take, take. So this pawn structure, C and D against E and B, can also arise from a Nimso Indian defense, what you saw way back in game one. This is called the hanging pawn structure. It's pawns that sort of stand in the center of the board like this, and black has E and B. Happens often in queen's pawn positions as well. 
Uh, but I digress. But now you know something else for your trivia night. Knight g5 is a very aggressive move, looking for this and this. So you have like various ideas like queen h5, queen d3, also queen f3 would attack this. And you can sacrifice over here. But black is completely fine. I mean, you can do this very tricky move here. Queen takes a8, looks like it wins uh, a rook. It does. It also loses a queen though. Because after something like queen takes a7, you not only have rook a8, you also have check. And wherever the king goes, you play check, and then you win the queen. Kind of a nice little trick. So, in shocking fashion, the players don't blunder that, and instead we go to an endgame, mm, like a heavy piece endgame with some bishops on the board. And once again, Fabiano is like slightly better from the opening and maybe throughout this game. So we have rook c8 attacking the pawn. Magnus defends it. Fabi, great move. Queen c4 getting in. a4, king h7. Queen f3, queen d5, a little peace dance here in the center. I mean, surely there's no way Magnus is going to create chances here, right? No queens now. Like, what are you going to do? All right, king g6. Ah. Okay, very clear that he's going to attack on the queen side with a5. Now, I actually won a game like this against Daniel Naroditsky. My game against Naroditsky in the video that I made. Uh, a5. And so we have the following position. It's now four pawns each. Magnus has pressure. He also has this opportunity. The bishop is a little bit loose. And he's just going to very slowly improve his position. h4. Not a, not a bad move. Looking for h5 and to push the king back. Fabi plays h5 himself. But now this is what Magnus did to Jan Yipomnishi again in their world championship match. That pawn might be a target. It might just be a target throughout the game. Or right now. Oh no. Is he actually just going to lose the pawn? There's no way he's just going to lose the pawn immediately, right? Ah, God. Oh my God. Okay, well, Fabi's at least got that pawn surrounded, right? Rook c4, nope. Checkmate threat. Checkmate threat or the loss of material. Check here. Oh no. Oh no, the king is getting hunted out. Oh no, the king is gonna get mated in the center of the board. The king runs. But now, look at this, F3. There's a mating net being set here for the king. That wasn't the best move, but Magnus had three seconds on the clock. The best move here was to give a check and force the king back. And then you have mate in nine, but Magnus weaves a mating net. Like G4, bishop G5 is mate. But bishop G5, king G7, rook G8. Like there's this, 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 and anything to G8. Fabi plays here, wins the pawn. It doesn't help. The mating net is still being weaved. The black king has no legal moves. So Magnus is basically threatening rook e8, rook e4, and also rook f8, rook f7. Black can defend this by playing f5. But it looks like it's over. The black king has no moves. Well, in this position with black, you have to play bishop d8. And instead of that, Fabi goes here and succumbs to the pressure because there was another idea here, and it was the fact that the king has made it in the center of the board. Now, folks, I told you I was going to give you a score update. After the 5 plus 1 segment, it was 6-2 Magnus, which is like, he was the favorite in the match. But 6-2, Magnus won the 3-1 portion, 7-1. After Blitz, he was up 13-3 against Fabiano Caruana. Let's keep going. Bullet time, okay? Bullet time. One minute. One second bonus, all right? E4, D6. First game of one plus one. Fabiano, bishop, G7. Queen, E2. Castles, castles. Here comes Magnus, aggressive early, but normal stuff. This is nothing crazy. Knight blocks the center. H3 prevents the natural development of the bishop. We have a little bit of clarity of the pawns. Attack on the queen side from Fabiano. Bishop comes back. Attack on the queen side. And once again, from the first 10 to 15 moves, Fabiano has advantage. Because he's very freaking good at chess. He's very good at chess. Rook e1. Bishop a6. Lining up the bishop to attack the queen. b4 is a possibility. Queen e4 gets out of the way. Fabi creates stability. Magnus finishes his development and now drops the queen back so that he could move the knight into the center of the board at some point. Or go knight f1. Or prevent c5. Which he doesn't prevent. Because suddenly this. Oh god. Oh god. Okay, so now Fabi goes on the attack. Fabi puts the white queen in jail. Like, absolute jail, no legal moves, gonna be trapped anytime now. Magnus plays bishop e4, bringing the queen home. Queen escapes, and two extra pawns. Rook d8, 
take take 94 i mean fabi just can't he's just unlucky in this entire match like every time he thinks he has something magnus has an answer but here comes fabi with the knight on d3 magnus says oh that's nice you want my rook take it you know why because look at these dark squared weaknesses you can take my rook the relative value of this knight is four points my rook is also worth four points so take it now you have no pressure and now it's my turn how is the white queen going to join the attack of infiltrating on the dark squares by retreating one move to c1 and going here or here now magnus plays knight into f6 check you've got two options take and lose immediately don't take and lose in about 10 moves now here comes my knight now here comes my queen you can sacrifice the rook for the night that's very nice the attack will continue i block mate and i'm oop i block mate and i am getting in with my bishop to f6 i'm also going to block this diagonal from your queen and your bishop so that now i can move my pieces more freely my knight comes back into the position with check you can take you can't take my queen because your king is under attack take take you go queen b6 setting up an attack on my king and i just move out of the way you cannot stop this you cannot stop this okay Let's go to our next game of, of one minute. This time Magnus Carlsen has the black pieces. This time Magnus plays kind of a anti, he was gonna play like a Pierce himself. He ends up playing kind of an anti Jobava London as Fabiano plays. I promise you we are getting to the conclusion of this game, of this match, h4, h5. Magnus attacks the center, Fabiano takes. This is very natural play here from White. I've actually had this position, I think, against Nicholas Theodoro over the board. And now Magnus plays here and takes his pawn back. Fabiano plays bishop f3. Nice move, applying some pressure to the center. Black defends the center with his bishop. And now knight e2, rerouting to maybe go here, here. Not there, that would be illegal. And now knight g4. So a big fight in the center of the board. Take, take. Knight d4 blocks the center. He moves out of the way. But suddenly, it's very clear that Magnus is very mobile with these pawns. Like, white sort of lost central pawn presence. So... He doesn't have as much control of the center of the board as he would like. But he gets out of the way, but the avalanche is coming. You can get out of the way of an avalanche. It's still going to catch you. E5. E4, right? Like, he tries to break out. Now E4 is a massive threat. Fabi plays E4, but uh, he just takes. F5. F4. And Fabi just resigns. 19 moves. He just resigns. Now, this happens in these, bull in these speed chess championship matches. Like, you just get tilted late in, the, late in the match. You just can't do anything. Nothing's going your way. Magnus wins another one. And I will show you one final game, um, which sort of encapsulates the match, right? Sort of encapsulates the match. And then I will tell you the final score, and I will tell you what exactly it is that Magnus has done. I think you're sort of getting the point, but I don't think you're ready for the punchline. So, again, we have another kind of Peards, King's Indian, uh, depending on how White would have played, but White started with E4. This is a modern, kind of a hippo. So Fabi playing a little bit of a fusion of openings. Very tense position early. Capture on d4. So black is very passive, but also very massive. So knight b4 attacks the bishop on d3. Rook c8. And the black, I mean, again, for like the 30th game or however many games they've played, uh, Fabiano has a very decent position from the opening. I mean, it's just like, he completely fine, right? Brings his queen out. Now, bishop h6. So typical, typical stuff here. Just trying to remove that dark squared bishop from the camp. But in comes the queen. So Magnus has two knights, a queen and a bishop, and this rook ready to rotate over. The bishop ready to activate at a moment's notice, and h4, h5. So there are potentially one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces ready to go for white. Okay, those pieces have now been traded. Now the door is open for white's light squared bishop. What a beast, by the way. This is why people like bishops more than knights. Because the bishop just hangs out on the first rank and pressures the complete opposite edge of the board. So we have takes, takes, pushing the knight back, right? Knight h5 check. Looks like Magnus is doing everything right. But suddenly he gets kicked out. And he continues to try to attack. But oh, there's the, there's the counter shot from Fabi. Oh boy. No. Whoa. So, the main piece has fallen, and now Fabi gets in with the knight. That's a fork. You can't take because you lose your queen. Rook g3, Fabi strikes out with g5, uh, strikes back, not strikes out. Now, rook e2, nothing can be taken here. Fabi here needs to unpin his king, and that's a fork. 
Now, White would maybe go, go somewhere with the Queen, and there's still some pressure, but he goes here instead of attacking the Rook. The Rook comes here, and now Fabi unpins this way, which, as you see, gives White some life, and White immediately takes advantage. Queen c5, King h2, very tense position. Fabi runs his King to the center. We have b3 attacking the Rook, which is a losing move again, because now Rook b4, Fabiano is completely winning. Knight f3, Rook d8, but completely winning in this position doesn't mean much. It's an incredibly stressful position. Magnus insists on losing material. He is now hunting this king across the board. Rook f3, Queen e7, and it looks like black should be completely fine. The king is escaping and black is up material. Queen f4, Rook d7, and he just starts pushing his pawn. Fabi comes back with the bishop looking to exchange. Makes sense. He's just up a full horse. Rook d3, knight f5, trade. That, I mean, this has got to be over. This is over. One guy has a horse. The other guy doesn't. Remember those old spice commercials? I'm on a horse. Swan dive to the best knight of your life. Queen f3, king a7. But suddenly Magnus just starts pushing his h-pawn. And all hell breaks loose. The pawn makes it to h7. Oh my goodness, what is happening? Is he actually not going to lose this game? Oh no. Oh no! No! Oh, the knight is. Oh, the rook is trapped. The rook is trapped, right? Rook's gotta come out. Now f5. Oh, so well timed, and, and that's it. That's it. That's the end of the game. There's just no. Oh no, he's defending himself. What? Now Fabi here can take on e5. Very tense position. Both guys have like eight seconds on the clock. Queen e7. Knight c7 out. But now the queen comes in. Wait. But he can't. Can't take anything because the pawn's gonna queen. Queen g7 back. Wait, the knight is pinned. White unpins on the h file. Gets in with the rook. No, 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 no. Oh my gosh. He's done it again. He just won. What? If you, if you take its rook g8, the king had to be on b7. So for example, in this position, if black had played king b7, this is not possible because the king... Magnus wins again. Folks, Magnus Carlsen won this match. 22 to 4. Yeah. Magnus Carlsen won the match against Fabiano Caruana 22 to 4. Now, the craziest thing about it was that it was an undefeated match. Magnus did not lose a game. And as you can see from the game that I just showed you at the end, he was struggling in a few games, but his defensive contortion skills... I, I mean, I don't know what to say. Now, of course, when you see a match like this, you got to say, well, Fabiano also wasn't at his best at the critical moments. Maybe Fabi had, like, just flown back from Los Angeles. I don't exactly know. But, I mean, it's just not fair. I, like, I... Fabiano is one of the best chess players of the last decade. Magnus just went undefeated against him in a four-hour match. You could say that they're not on the same level, maybe in speed chess. But 22 to 4? I mean, that's... And the thing about it is, it gets... Lo it, it, like, it goes from bad to worse. Like, I, I, I know how Fabiano likely feels. It's like, you can't win three or four games. I felt like this in my match against Eric Rosen. Not to compare myself and Eric Rosen to Magnus and Fabiano. I mean, we are slightly worse chess players. But, like, that's... A, you, you feel games get away, and you just... You lose your mind, basically. So, I... Oh my gosh, folks. This is only the second Speed Chess Championship match in history where there was a person that did not lose a game. The other one, I believe, was Hikaru versus Hoi Fan. But that was a first-round matchup. This is... I don't know. I... Didn't I tell you you would be shocked at the result? Well, I, I hope it delivered. That's all. That's all I have for you. I, I got nothing else to say. I feel kind of bad making this video, like I said in the introduction. I, I met Fabiano a couple of days ago, and I did not want to make a video about, you know, a gentleman who I just recorded a very nice podcast episode with, had a great, very nice chat with, and then this happens. I hope I didn't poison his chest. Like, I hope meeting me didn't ruin Fabiano's chest for this match. Well, then again, he also... No, he, he met... He met other people in Los Angeles too. Not, not, he recorded some episodes with other people, not just me. So I, I can't take full responsibility. So yeah. Um. <laughs> That's the end of the video. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Get out of here.